Hey everyone, this lesson is on polyarteritis nodosa or PAN. So in this lesson, we're talking about what this condition is, how we can make the diagnosis, and how we can treat it. So PAN is a necrotizing vasculitis involving medium-sized vessels. So that's important. Necrotizing vasculitis of medium-sized vessels. It is an ANCA-negative condition, and it is associated with hepatitis B infections. However, it's only about 5 to 10 percent of cases that are, are associated with hepatitis B infections. So oftentimes, there's an association, but it's not necessarily a strong one. So with regards to the epidemiology of PAN, there is a male to female ratio of around 1.5 to 2 to 1. So males are more affected, usually can be double the number compared to females. Now this condition typically occurs between the ages of 40 and 60 years of age. And this condition has systemic involvement. Wherever there are medium-sized vessels, that's what is going to be affected so it can be systemic oftentimes the kidneys are the most commonly involved organ and interestingly this condition seems to spare the lungs so some of the signs and symptoms of pan include the following so typically there are constitutional symptoms so again fatigue weight loss perhaps fever chills those types of symptoms there can also be myologists so you're gonna have feelings of muscle aches and cramps there can be skin manifestations. Typically, you're going to get a levito reticularis. So you're going to get this kind of webbing type of look to your skin. And there can be neuropathy, so issues with uh, sensation. So how do we make the diagnosis of PAN? Well, there isn't a specific criteria to make the diagnosis, but the American College of Rheumatology, or ACR, has particular criteria, and if you meet three or greater of these criteria, you can essentially um, say that this is a PAN or a polyarteritis nodosa diagnosis. So what are some of these criteria? The first one is weight loss. We talked about this as a constitutional symptom. Typically, it's greater than four kilograms of unintentional weight loss with um, absent of other factors or conditions, and it has occurred since the beginning of the illness. The second is myalgias, weakness or lag tenderness. So what we talked about earlier, you get those muscle weakness or muscle cramps. And typically the myalgias are diffuse uh, and the weakness is also diffuse as well. The third one is levito reticularis, that uh, skin look of a kind of a webbing um, appearance. The fourth one is neuropathy. So it could be mononeuropathy, it could be mononeuropathy multiplex or polyneuropathy. The fifth one is testicular pain or tenderness. The sixth one is a diastolic blood pressure of greater than 90 uh, millimeters of mercury. The seventh criteria is an elevated creatinine in bun. So creatinine greater than 130, a bun greater than 14.3 mill millimoles per liter. So this leads into the kidney being affected most commonly. The eighth criteria is being hepatitis B positive. So just because there is a small association, about five to 10% of cases, this could be used as a criteria for diagnosis. The ninth one is having an arteriographic abnormality. So you see something odd on imaging. And the 10th is an artery biopsy that shows presence of granulocytes plus or minus mononuclear leukocytes in the artery wall. So these are the 10 ACR criteria. And you may be thinking, well, you know, you could use these criteria to diagnose many people with polyarteritis nodosa, but really it's all in the context of the clinical presentation and having no other known conditions that are causing or influencing these types of presentations or criteria. So if there's nothing else and you're seeing a lot of these criteria, it may be a polyarteritis nodosa diagnosis. So again, not a perfect criteria, but it's helpful to know these criteria and possibly use it for diagnosing a patient with it. So once you've made the diagnosis of polyarteritis nodosa, how do you treat it? Well, treatment involves the use of prednisone, so steroids. And secondly, you also use cyclophosphamide as well. And in the cases where hepatitis B is associated or may be related to the diagnosis, you can use antivirals to treat the hepatitis B as well, which can help with the polyarteritis nodosa uh, symptoms. So 
If you want to learn more about other vasculitides and other conditions, please check out my other lessons as well. And if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.